afternoon. Thank you for coming. Uh, it is my pleasure to present to you today. And uh, we've got a lot of slides. It's like Christmas in terms of information. So we're going to get right to it. I've got two things to say that may be controversial. And one is that I believe that uh, the, the rare earth elements are the best commodity right now to invest in. And secondly, that Commerce Resources has the best rare earth element deposit. Rare earth elements, the best commodity. Rare earth elements in terms of supply and demand. Rare earth elements demand has always increased. Uh, depending on whether you are uh, driving an internal combustion engine car that needs cerium and lanthanum, that demand is averaging at about 3% per annum. If you're driving an EV, that would be more representative of the 10% demand that rare earth elements are seeing right at this point in time against supply side concerns. Now, here's Greta Thunberg, here's a Ford Raptor, here's Saudi Aramco and their IPO, the world's largest company. These are all different plot points of the same narrative, which essentially is that the world is transitioning out of fossil fuels. Saudi Aramco talking about peak oil in 2035, do you think they're actually thinking 2035? With the IPO in 2020 or late 2019, I think they're actually targeting peak oil at 2025, something like that. The reality is the world is switching over. In terms of the ashram deposit, I would say this is the best rare earth element deposit in the world at this point in time. In terms of rare earth elements, uh, in general, uh, and the global market, China has been the world's largest producer historically. But in the last couple of years, China has become a net importer of both rare earth elements and fluorospar. In terms of Batman the Cape Crusader, his little buddy is Robin. Our little buddy is our byproduct of fluorospar. We currently have a resource of approximately 20 million tons of fluorospar valued at about $500 US per ton. That's $10 billion for our byproduct. In terms of the Ashram Rare Earth Element Fluorospar Deposit, it is the world's second largest resource, second only to the world's largest resource, which is owned and is in the same deposit as the world's largest rare earth element producer, which leads us to segue into the similarities between the ashram deposit and the world's largest rare earth element and fluorospar producer. A little bit of quick history. In 2005, China imposed what then became an illegal two-tiered pricing system, an export duty. And then at that point, approximately 600 rare earth element projects came to market to be with the hope of becoming that alternate source to China. This is the problem. Less than 1% of those 600 projects shared the essential fundamentals that the Chinese deposits have. And then over $1 billion was spent on R&D on trying to process economically those non-standard style of deposits. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to say space pen, but we'll get along. If you left this presentation and only remember two things besides commerce resources, I would hope they would be geology and mineralogy, because these are the key points in terms of what makes a rare earth element deposit economic. In terms of the history of rare earth elements, nothing has changed. Historically, and still today, there are 150 rare earth element minerals that can host levels of rare earth elements, but only four are pro processed commercially. That number has not changed at all with that over $1 billion of R&D over the last 15 years. In terms of also those rare earth element minerals, they can hold the largest percentage of the rare earth elements. And so the minerals I'm talking about are monocyte, bastinocyte, and xenotime. There is the other one, loperite, which is really only found in Russia, but that accounts for less than 10% of the global market. We're really talking about a round hole, square peg situation, where ultimately, Commerce Resources is not asking you to put money into a science project. We're asking you to put money into a project that shares the fundamentals with the world's largest producer. And we also have the fluorospar byproduct. In terms of the space pen, this may be an allegory, but I think it's an allegory very well suited to the rare earth element industry, where apparently NASA spent approximately $1 million to figure out how to produce a pen that could write in zero gravity. At the end of the day, the Russians took a pencil. That's the same thing with rare earth elements. Why fool with standard technology? In the musical world, and I am a musician, we used to say, sing a hit, be a hit. This is singing a hit and being a hit. In terms of commerce resources and our goal, it is to be competitive with China. We do not expect a premium to be paid by any Western company 
for our material. In terms of Robert Friedland, a man who needs no introduction here, uh, Robert said some very interesting things about rare earth elements at Mines and Money four years ago. And the one that really hit home is that the world is tired of China having it by the balls. And that was specifically about rare earth elements. Now, in terms of the companies that have requested a sample from us, this is an incomplete list because there are several majors on this list that we are under NDA with. But this is a list of companies that have requested a sample from us in the hopes that we will become that alternate source of rare earth element production to China because none of these companies want to have to depend upon a Chinese source for their future. In terms of the Canada-US Joint Action Plan, which you may or may not have seen, was released in an announcement by NRCAN on January 9th. This is something that our Prime Minister was started working on after China threatened to halt shipments of rare earth elements in May of 2019. And Trudeau and Trump had a meeting in June and there was a White House announcement on this on June 19th, 2019. This has just been released uh, as of 11 days ago. And ultimately, as it says, this action plan will promote uh, joint initiatives, including research and development cooperation, supply chain modeling, and increased support for industry. In regards to the Canada-US Joint Action Plan, I was asked to come to Montreal last week, last Wednesday, to present to all of the major Quebec funds. This was arranged by Brian Coates, the outgoing president of OSISCO, who has been the Quebec government's main liaison between Quebec and the US government over the fall. And uh, I had a meeting following that with the US Department of Commerce. We'll certainly keep you up to date on how this action plan may positively uh, be a benefit to commerce resources. In terms of the Ashram project, it's in Nunavik in northern Quebec, and there are several aspects to the location of the deposit, not only being in the world's most attractive mining jurisdiction, that I would be happy to tell you about more. Uh, but it is in northern Quebec. The one aspect of that is that we are lacking is an infrastructure build, a road build, but I can talk about that more later. In terms of our rare earth element mineral concentrate, we are now producing concentrates, or our concentrate is dominated, as you see, by monazite and then bastnazite, the two minerals that dominate the industry. In terms of our ability, because of these minerals, we can produce a rare earth element concentrate at very low cost that compares with all of the producers of rare earth elements currently. And we can actually produce a better concentrate than Linus, the Australian producer, can. In terms of the resource right now, uh, the resource is approximately collectively 250 million tons with that 20 million tons of fluorospar as our byproduct. However, these deposits also have differences in terms of the percentage distribution of what the market does or does not want. And the Ashram project has one of the highest distributions of what the market most highly values, and that is the magnet feed to make the magnets that then go into every electric motor known to man and basically in the engine of every electric vehicle, including Tesla for the last two years. In terms of concentrating, this is essential information of what all producers do, and that is what we can do. And we can produce currently an approximate 50% concentrate at a very low cost, and at the same time produce a fluorite concentrate byproduct. The fluorite itself uh, is of interest to us because it is of interest to Norfalco Sales and Glencore. And we've had an MOU with Norfalco Sales for four years now, where they are going to give us a very deep discount on the acids we would use in exchange for their opportunity to market our fluorospar byproduct. This is the acid grade fluorospar price. It's tripled in the last three years because China has become a net importer. These are our financing requirements to take us through to bankable feasibility study. In terms of programs underway right now, where we will have news coming out, we have the Quebec government sponsoring us at the University of Laval. We have the Quebec government sponsoring us with work at INRS. And we have the Canadian government sponsoring work on our material under NRCAN. I'm out of time at this point in time, but our booth is right behind us here. Uh, with the, I'm part of the Zim2 group of companies. I would be happy to answer any other questions you may have. Thank you very much.